Hi, uh, this video tutorial I will cover uh, service locator design pattern. First, we will see what and all components uh, which involved in service locator design pattern. There are five components which involved in uh, service locator design pattern. The first one is uh, client, and uh, second one is uh, target. Uh, target is nothing but uh, business service objects. Uh, example of uh, business service objects are uh, JMS service or EJB service, and the third component is service locator. Fourth component is cash, and the fifth component is registry service. Uh, example of registry service is uh, JND registry service. Uh, in JDE, mostly we will use uh, JND registry service uh, to store the service objects. Uh, so how we will uh, store uh, service object in JND registry is uh, like a key value pair. So key will be the service name, uh, value will be the service object. Uh, this is how uh, it will store. I, am, I have shown uh, one example JMS service and uh, JMS service is a service name and uh, service object is JMS service object. Like that, EJB service is a service name and uh, EJB service object is a service object. Okay, this is how uh, JND in JND registry uh, the service object will be stored. Next, we will see the cache. Uh, the cache uh, we will use in service locator design pattern to improve the performance. Uh, so usually this cache is used to store the service object. Okay. Um, we will see how this hash work uh, in service locator design pattern in later point of time. Uh, next one is uh, service locator. So this service locator will do the remote lookup of uh, service object in the JND registry. Uh, so how it will do is it will use the service name uh, to look up the service object in the uh, JND registry service. So it uses uh, initial contacts to communicate to the uh, JND registry. Suppose uh, uh, service locator want uh, want to get JMS service object from the JND registry means uh, it will pass uh, service name as JMS service. Then uh, using that uh, service name. Uh, the service locator can get uh, JMS service object from the JND reg JNDA registry service. Okay, and uh, next one is um, client. So mostly uh, the client of uh, service locator will be the business delegate uh, uh, class. Okay, so the uh, client will uh, usually ask uh, service locator uh, give me the service object. So what it will pass is the client will pass the service name to the service locator and uh, based on the service name uh, service locator first it will check it uh, the service object is there in the local hash. Uh, if it is not there then the service locator will do the remote lookup using the JND initial context uh, by passing the service name. So once it get the service object from the registry service uh, the service locator uh, will add that service object into the cache. Uh, once it added, then it will return the service object back to the client. Once uh, client get the service object, uh, uh, using the service object instance, it can access the method of uh, target. So this is how the whole flow is uh, working. Okay. Uh, suppose say uh, the client want to uh, get the JMS uh, service object and access that method access the method of uh, JMS service object then what client will do is it will pass uh, the name service name of the JMS service object so for service name of the J uh, JMS service object is JMS service so the client will pass JMS service to the service locator first uh, service locator what it will do is uh, it will first check uh, in cache the JMS service object is present or not. Now you can see uh, JMS service object is not present in the uh, cache which is uh, the local cache. In the local cache it is not there. Then uh, what the service locator does is uh, it will do the remote lookup uh, in the JNDA registry service by passing the service name. Uh, so in the JNDA registry uh, JMS service object is there. So the JNDA registry will uh, give uh, uh, JMS service object back to the service locator. Then what service locator does is it will add the JMS service object in the local hash for the future use. Okay, so once it added, then uh, uh, the JMS service object it will return back to the client. So once client get the 
JML service object, uh, it can invoke methods of the JML service object. Okay. And suppose say again uh, client is asking uh, JML service object to the service locator. So it will pass JML service uh, JMS service to the service locator. JMS service is nothing but service name. Okay. So uh, service locator it will check in hash. So this time uh, the JMS service object is available in cache, right? So from the hash it will uh, get the JMS service object and return to the client. So in this way, uh, service locator is avoiding uh, doing the remote lookup of uh, service object in the JNDA registry. Basically, this remote lookup is costly operation. So that what we are doing is, uh, whenever uh, we are getting a service object from the uh, JND registry, we are putting in the cache. Okay, this way we can avoid the costly lookup operation. And uh, suppose uh, client is asking uh, EJB service object from the service locator, it will send the service name uh, EJB service to the service locator. Then uh, service locator first we check in the hash, and the hash only JMS service is there. EJB service object is not there. So it does the remote lookup uh, to the JND registry. From the JND registry, uh, it will get the EJB service object. Uh, then the service locator will add the EJB service object to the hash like this. Okay. Then it will return the EJB service object to the client. Uh, so using the EJB service object uh, reference, it can call the method of the EJB service object. Okay. Uh, so after that, uh, Whenever client ask JMS service object or EJB service object, uh, always the service object will be returned from the hash. It won't do the remote lookup. So the uh, performance uh, will be improved, right? So this hash is the local to the service locator, okay? So this uh, remote lookup means uh, client will make a remote call to the server that will be in uh, some other place. But the hash is the uh, hash is located in the local. So uh, so it is fast and it will improve the performance. Okay, now we will read out uh, uh, some of the points. The service located design pattern is used when we want to locate various services using JNDA lookup. So using JNDA lookup, if you want to look up uh, various services, uh, then we can go for service located design pattern. And uh, considering high cost of uh, looking up JNDA for a service, service locator makes use of hashing technology so that we have uh, already seen so the remote lookup is costly operation so we are using hash right and uh, this is about uh, service located design pattern and i have created a separate video for uh, uh, service located design pattern class diagram and sequence diagram and i have also created uh, one more video for how to implement a service located design pattern and uh, this is about service located design pattern introduction and thanks for watching. Bye.